Thank you for staying with us. We still have with us our panelists in the studio as well as on the Google Plus Hangout. So let me just um, bring back um, uh, Fiona. Fiona, um, one of the key issues is the issue of um, affordability of the internet. Are there policies, so to speak, now, you know, in East Africa, in Uganda, in Africa, you know, as a whole, that looks towards driving down the prices of the in internet? Um. I think in Uganda currently, we really have a very huge crisis when it comes to internet. We have a few societies like the Internet Society, which I believe have, uh, have tried their part. But in Uganda, the state of Ugandans and the internet is very alarming and very, very in a very bad state. Why would I say that? Because by the time you introduce a tax to social media, by the time you introduce tax to mobile money, you're trying to to me, as a tech world person, as a tech person, it's more or less crippling innovation and crippling the use of internet. Because today, as I speak, I have to pay tax to be online. I have to pay, if not, I have to use VPN to bypass it. Again, the service providers, they have not subsidized the price of the internet. Wi-Fi is not something you would find everywhere to freely access. It's in a few institutions, like universities and a few workplaces. Still, I would say for East Africa and Africa's a large, we really have so much to do when it comes to internet and its pricing. And then the, also the policy bit. Let me touch the policy bit because Quick, quickly. sometimes, yes, quickly. Sometimes I wonder, because if we have the proper people in the policy sector implementing the right policies, yeah. would not be suffering the crisis of what we have when it comes to the internet. All right, still all right. I, I, wish, I wish we could go on, but I mean, thankfully, you can afford internet, and hopefully more women in Uganda, East Africa, and Africa as a whole will, be, or will also be able to you know, afford internet. But I have to say thank you for joining us you know, on the program today from Kampala in Uganda. Um, Fiona Nabut Kenya, thanks once again. Thank you very much, Victor. Uh, of course. So, um, Fiona made mention of, um, you know, the cultural and conferences, you know, and she also, Adora made mention of, you know, affordability. What else or what other um, aspects would you say is hindering, you know, the, is hindering women from being part of the, t the tech Okay, world? so I think the stereotype um, <clears throat> where um, you think, the, the, the African stereotype where we naturally think that tech or tech-related um, disciplines or skills are not for women, you know, I'm like, are oh, you studying computer science? Are you sure you can do this? Are you sure you can pass mathematics? You know, so that stereotype is there. I mean, when someone was talking to me as, um, recently, I saw like, ah, and I told, I told, I shared what my plans were, like, wow, all these things you're doing, you should be a man doing it, not a woman. Like, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take me anything to create content. It doesn't take me anything to edit my videos. It doesn't take me anything to post you know, so um, that stereotype is there, and then we should it should actually change. You know, women are taking up STEM skills. I mean, STEM skills shouldn't just be around coding. Mm -hmm. I mean, content creation, mm -hmm. being able to use your phone and you know navigate through the apps on your phone is using technology, and it shouldn't be just be a man's um, duty or to, to do. Mm. So it's 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 generic. Uh, so Adora, let me, I mean, so if, if, because like she's saying now, it shouldn't be a man's world. I mean, yeah. so how do we create that digital future where women, you know, are running things, which in turn will mean that more women will come on board? Yeah. For me, if you ask me, I think um, it starts from policy, um, you know, getting women on the table as well to begin to contribute to policy making. Because, I mean, if you look at, um, the landscape of those who are actually making policy. Look at the legislature, for instance. How many women do we actually have there in the National Assembly? You look at you know, some of these other ministries as well. How many women are at the helm of affairs? Now, um, we need more women on the table too because you cannot begin to make laws or policies for women when you don't have an understanding. You know, so we need more women on the table. We need more men as well. Kudos to you, Victor, for also you know, having this topic on air. But we need more men as well to become champions for bridging the digital gender divide. I should get a badge. Yeah, 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 you should, like, right here, yeah. <laughs> I know. With the A4AI chair being a Nigerian, mm -hmm. do we have those policies quickly? Um, well, we are getting there, but we're not yet there. So there's still a lot that needs to be done. Um, we've, like she had mentioned, we've seen, you know, certain instances where 
Um, certain bloggers have been arrested. Um, there's also the fear of internet shutdown with the upcoming election. So yeah. I think we can actually do a lot more. What do you think? Yeah, so I think that um, Nigeria has or had uh, broad um, the broadband um, national broadband plan, policy, which um, expires this year, 2018. 18. So um, I'm I'm not really sure if there's going to be another policy, policy. document and all of that. But I mean, we've we're not where we used to be. There's been progress, but we still need the internet to be more more affordable so that more businesses can thrive exactly. and more women can be online. online yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course. So just lastly, before we go, um, what was your takeaway from the Women Tech Summit in Ghana? Well, I mean... Or which commitment did you make? <laughs> well, I committed to um, be more in the policy space, which I've always been doing, and also to try and create more content that women, that can make women go online more. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, for me, which is what I've been doing, um, I committed to telling more women's stories. You know, women who are using tech, regardless of how little it is, to, to you know, for economic empowerment. And I've been doing that on my YouTube channel. But the thing is, we have you on tape saying all this, so I'm going to hold you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I will be monitoring your progress in doing all of these things. So but can I, I ask what your commitment? <laughs> you were not there, but what was your commitment? My commitment is to... I mean, this is a commitment. Uh, I have all. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having. A, I'm hosting an all women show. Yeah, and that's a that's, commitment. That's, that's good. Good to see you. <laughs> thank you very much. But I would say thank you as well for joining us, Adora Okoli, founder of Tech Culture NG. Yeah. As well as Olamide Bayelo, you are the founder of Hexel Place as well as a YouTuber. Yes. Well, that's where we are. We'll be back in a moment with the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Please stay with us. This week's most viewed videos begins with the video of Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki stating reasons why presidential candidate of the PDP voted into office come the 2019 elections. The man that can bring food to the table, the man that can fight security, the man that can unite Nigeria, Atuku Abubakar. The man, it is about food, it's about security, and we'll vote. In fourth is the PDP launch of their presidential campaign in the northwest region of Nigeria. PDP. Third sport sees the video of Imo State Governor Rocha Sukaracha asking President Muhammad Buhari to intervene in some hitches in the APC. I think that a subsidy, at least a minimal subsidy, is useful now. And that's why I think that uh, the, the subsidy regime is one that we can tolerate, but obviously it, we must remove it as time goes on. But we can't uh, remove it immediately. In second is the subsidy debate between the vice presidential candidates of the PDP and APC during the vice presidential debate. Well, what we are subsidizing today is inefficiency. If you get it right, the price will still come down. There's no way a country can have a budget of 340 billion naira for health, which translates to five naira a day for its citizens, and then pay a trillion for subsidy. And first part is the claim by a vice presidential candidate of the YPP, Uma Getsu, that full subsidy is nothing but a scam to a typical Nigerian. There was subsidy removal and still subsidy removal and nothing has been done. I still so had them saying they are still paying subsidy and the lives of Nigerians have not improved and we've not seen anything substantial or something tangible on the ground. So to be candid, subsidy to a typical Nigerian is just a scam. That's how I will call it the way President Bahari once said it in the newspaper. Thank you. And there you go, those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. However, with the increasing recognition of the critical relationship between online access and economic growth, policies to drive down internet prices need to increase to ensure more women, especially in the rural areas, get online. As the saying goes, when you empower a woman, you empower a nation. On that note, we come to the end of today's edition of the program, but do continue the conversation via the social media handles showing 
on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Fitz on Matthias.